<clears throat> Hello, sports fans. My name is John Heyer. I am an information topologist. In this video, I'll be talking about race visualization. You can apply to either team or multi-stage race events. I'll be showing some of the data visualization I've created for a relay race. A relay race is a gold mine of visualization potential. Individual or single discipline events, boring. With team or multi-stage events, you can create captivating real-time displays and interesting detailed post-race visual assessments. On the screen behind me, you see a race dashboard created for a large monitor display at a venue near my home in Upper Bavaria, Germany. This dashboard has four main visual elements, two of them tabular and two graphical. There are leaderboards and bucket boards, and there are bump charts and statistical charts. I will explain each of these in some detail shortly. Firstly, though, I would like to mention that behind this dashboard is a general purpose data reduction software program I've developed over the years for which I will not be delving into any details. It is, however, the engine behind each visual element. The dashboards, as well as other templates for publishing results and awards are done in accordance with the race director specifications. This does leave me some room for creativity, albeit tempered by my aesthetic sensibilities, which I have discovered align quite well with Edward Tufta's rules for quantitative data visualization. If you're in this field, Edward Tufta is a must read. See the link. Now for the race specifications. In this event, there are 162 registered teams of 10 runners each. Each runner on a team runs one of three different colored courses. The courses are run in the following sequence, three, three times a white course, three times a yellow, ending with four times a red course. The teams carry a classic relay baton embedded with an RFID chip, which is picked up by an antenna at the start finish. The start finish is located just before the baton handoff zone. Because at any given time, only 10% of the competitors are actually racing, this is very much an event for spectators. There are close to 2,000 runners, family, friends, helpers, food vendors, dogs, cats, paramedics, all eager to know how the race is unfolding. Perhaps not the food vendors. These are the race specs. Let's turn now to the visualization magic. The leaderboards are analogous to flight arrival boards you see at the airport with the order of arrival from top to bottom. The five different leaderboard categories are men's, including mixed teams, women's children, companies, and out of county guests. The largest category being the men's with 76 teams requiring two columns in this dashboard layout. I should also mention at the top of the screen and to the right of the race name is a tally for the total number of finishers. And next to that, the merciless race clock, tick tock, tick. In integrated into the left side of each leaderboard, there is a bump chart showing the position history of each team. These charts are somewhat squeezed here, becoming a bit of a tangle in large category midfields. So I reproduce them in post-race published results in a larger, more readable format. To the right of the bump chart are the team start numbers, names, current leg, and total time. Team standing is determined by the current leg together with the team's total time. An overall race standing across all categories is also tracked and published by the software. All leaderboards have leg separation lines. These are the horizontal dashed gray lines that move vertically down the leaderboards like incoming waves on the beach, separating groups of runners on different legs of the race. This line represents the start finish line and is the location where the race action is taking place. Immediately above the line is the last team for a given lap to cross the start finish. As teams cross the start finish, the program flashes them red for five seconds. 
Directly below the line is the next anticipated team. If this team is not the next across the line, it must mean that that team has been overtaken out on the course. The bump chart bumps teams up and down according to rank changes on the leaderboard. When a team finishes its final lap, its leaderboard position is frozen and given a shaded background. Moving now to the leg counter bucket board. The bucket board is located in the upper left hand corner. It counts the completion of each leg by each category with total percentage leg completion at the top. Please note percentages will not reach 100% if there are any did not start or did not finish teams. The buckets or boxes have dynamic stop light background colors that change from red through yellow to green as legs are completed. The bucket board is useful for visualizing overall race completeness, alerting course marshals and sweepers when a course can be cleared, barriers removed, markers taken down, and streets reopened to traffic. It's also helpful for directing any search and rescue teams out onto the courses with the missing runners. Finally, as space allowed, I couldn't resist adding some non-essential race statistics. In a version of Pimp My Race Dashboard, I've added dynamic bar charts for each course that give a tally of the course completion times. Each thin vertical bar represents a 15 second time bucket. Statistic fans will recognize normal or Gaussian distributions coalescing. I've added course average and record time tags, which appear only after certain thresholds on the bucket board are achieved. Here I'm experimenting with overlapping of charts by using a transparency attribute to squeeze the most out of the available space.